I remember that day because that's the day that I found out there was only $21.33 left in my bank account. I was broke. depiction of, um, of what, what poverty looks like uh, in, in that clip. And so I'll start off with Professor Horwitz. Uh, do we have an obligation to alleviate uh, poverty, and how do we do that? Yeah, and I, let me make one quick point about that clip, uh, two, two related points. One, we don't know from that clip why Will Smith's character is in that situation, which I think is an interesting question. I'd also note that, you know, as sort of, as we think about getting libertarian messages across, we need more clips with that kind of emotional power, right? This, that, that sort of depict the ways in which people can be, be wronged by, by forces outside their control sometimes. So I think one of the things that we want to say about that, I, I want to say about that is, look, if the question is how do we alleviate, how do we fix inequality, and really I think where we're really talking about is how do we alleviate poverty is the question. How do, we bring pe how do we bring people up? I think one of the things that we can do is to focus on the ways in which government sets barriers in front of the opportunities for poor people to make themselves wealthier. So if, it was, you know, if I could wave my magic wand, I think I'd do four things, that, uh, four changes I would want to see that would, I think, help address this. One, we need to end the war on drugs, which is destroying uh, poor neighborhoods, particularly urban poor neighborhoods, as well as rural ones, as well as all the other terrible things that the war on drugs does, but certainly uh, has decimated neighborhoods and made them uninhabitable and discouraged businesses from operating there and, and, and providing work. Uh, second, we need to get rid of the minimum wage, which has knocked off the lowest rungs of the economic ladder for, for millions of Americans, again, particularly the lowest skilled and, and those who need entry into the job market the most. Relatedly, third, uh, occupational licensure laws that make it more difficult, often uh, at the behest of incumbent wealthier uh, producers of products, to, to set up barriers to entry to poor people who want to open, whether it's anything from a hair braiding shop to whatever, to driving a cab to whatever else might be, that those opportunities are being closed off to them. And finally, something I mentioned earlier, I think one of the most important things we can do is we have to, we have to uh, get more competition into the schooling system. Uh, urban and rural, I live in a rural area, and I can tell you many of the public schools there are just as bad as the same ones we see in urban areas. Uh, government has failed at providing effective schooling for poor people. We need alternatives, we need competition, we need choice to find ways to help poor folks get the human capital they need to try to avoid the kinds of situations we see in that clip. Uh, I agree with most of that. Uh, I certainly think that the war on drugs is a disaster. I, uh, I certainly think that it's good to get more competition into, uh, into schooling. I think so far the results of that are mixed. I don't think it's an obvious panacea that's going to uh, solve all these problems. There may yet be other things that have to be taken. Uh, I, uh, I, you know, about the licensure laws, I'm, I'm actually kind of libertarian. I, I don't even like the fact that I have to you know, uh, get a prescription from a doctor to get a medication. Uh, you know, I'm a grown up with a PhD. I, I know the difference between poison and... Um, You're already uh, a doctor. <laughs> that's right, I'm already a doctor. You would think I, you know, I can marry people. You would think I can, uh, uh, as a philosopher. Anyway, uh, so, you know, I'm opposed to that. The minimum wage, I think, is a, is a, is a, is a more complicated question. The economic studies that I have uh, looked at or heard of suggest that the reduction in unemployment it, uh, because of that is very small and eventually made up for by the fact that there's more money in the economy and therefore more demand. So I don't think it's obvious that this is a negative thing, but you know, maybe it is. I, I'm open on the, uh, the empirical question. The thing I just want to insist on is, and when you look at this picture, don't think about Will Smith. Think about that kid, okay? Why Will Smith got poor is, Maybe his problem. Maybe he deserves it. You know, maybe he's a crook. Maybe he was stupid. You know, maybe he was lazy. The kid doesn't deserve it. Okay? That's where our real obligation comes. So let me put a question uh, to you, Professor Horwitz. Is there a role uh, for government to play in the alleviation of poverty? Ideally, 
so in other words, sort of at, at, at a, in a, you know, if we're writing up a, a treatise on political philosophy, what role does the government play in alleviating the plight of the, of the least well off? And then attached to that, is there a role for the government to play in 2012 uh, America? And it's, so this, this particular government, is there a role that it can play, a positive role that right. it can play? A couple of things. I mean, I, I think that we can imagine a world, perhaps, where the role of government is minimal. And this is a point that, of course, libertarians have disagreed on, right? You know, we have sort of more anarchist ones on one end who think that all of those services can be provided through the, the market or through civil society organizations, synagogues and churches and, and, and mutual aid societies and all that, to classical liberal types, right, who would argue that government perhaps has a role to provide something like a minimum income floor or, or the like. I think those are all, right, we, those are all within bounds as a kind of libertarian position position on, on, on what the role of government should be. So again, if we're going to write up that treatise on political economy, I think it depends upon differences among libertarians will play themselves out and how, how they see that. We can have you know, sort of you know, Rothbard kind of on one end and Hayek on another. And, and those are all in play. So what do we need government to, to solve those problems? I'd like to think we can do with the least government possible to solve those problems. And for me, the more interesting question is, how do we, let's see what happens when we get government out of the way and see how well people do and see what we're left with as a real problem of poverty and then think about what, what kind of ways there are to, to deal with it. In the world we exist in today, I think we're in a more complicated situation, right? Um, we, can, we, can, we can see the ways in which uh, opportunities for poor people are restricted by the kinds of things that I talked about before. And at some level, one could argue, if government's going to restrict those opportunities, then perhaps it has an obligation to, to sort of fix what it's, what, it's, what it's destroying on the other half. I certainly think it's really important when we think about these questions from a libertarian perspective to not take away the safety nets before we create the additional opportunities. The right way to go about this is create the additional opportunities by getting government out of the way in the ways I talked about. Then, once we give folks the opportunity to pull themselves up, then let's start to talk about how much of that so-called safety net, or whether it's a safety net or a straitjacket, it's not clear, how much of that that we can live without. And I think that's the right way to go at it from, from a libertarian perspective. So um, that might not be a direct answer to your question, but I think that's, you know, as, as libertarians think about these issues of inequality and poverty, that's, that's a one way to go at it. So uh, let me, let me uh, twist the screws a bit with you, uh, Professor Ryman. So, uh, on, on the one hand, right, it's, so we've got some very large sort of government-led uh, causes of poverty, right? The, the rich have a tendency, once they've climbed the ladder, right, to pull the ladder up behind them, right? This is this, this image that we have. And so we've got government programs like, you know, the war on drugs, like, uh, uh, like the, we have a series of wars that we're engaged in, right? All of which tend to disproportionately uh, affect uh, the least well-off. Um, so in other words, so libertarians have done a lot of work in terms of, of trying to describe the ways in which uh, the rich tend to seize uh, the mechanisms involved with government through the things like professional licensure and these sorts of things. Um, do you see the power of those arguments? Do you see the weight of those arguments? Sure. Is there a way to, is, in other words, is there a way to say, uh, to maybe to rephrase something Dr. Hort said in the last session, right, where um, you know, government is the problem, government is the solution? Well, I don't, I don't believe government is the only problem because I think other things like discrimination uh, are, are problems too, and the government doesn't uh, make that happen. Um, but I mean, I, you know, I am certainly uh, sympathetic to the idea that there are uh, restrictive licensing rules that they, you know, that uh, people with power try to cut off uh, access to competition. Uh, uh, from other people, and that uh, you know we should eliminate those things. So where that can be demonstrated, uh, they will they will have my vote. Um, you know I am very dubious about the idea that we can eliminate government here. I mean here's one thing: uh, uh, Steve talks about uh, charitable organizations, mutual aid, and so on. Well, this is something that's always surprised me about libertarians, because after all, if you if you say that this is charity, okay then you make the recipient, in a certain sense, uh, uh, is diminished, okay? That, that person is, ha, receives the free charity of uh, other people who are better off. If I'm right and inequality or some degree of inequality is a matter of justice, then it shouldn't be rectified by charity. Charity means I give freely you know, what I have out of my generosity, okay? Justice means I give what I owe, 
okay, what people have a right to. And that, I believe, treats people with greater dignity than uh, charity. Now, that's not to say that welfare programs treat people with greater dignity. It's to say that the idea that you do it by law, that you say these people have a right, treats them with dignity. And, of course, you should follow through on that. So, uh, you know, I'm, um, I'm skeptical of the idea that we can do this without that. And, you know, if you ask me what we should do now, well, I would love to see uh, Obama's proposal for encouraging um, uh, preschool education. You know, the French have a terrific preschool system. It's government funded, okay? Uh, it's everybody, even the richest people try to get their, want their kids to be in it, okay? And, it, you know, it has a kind of equalizing thing, equalizing the, uh, the starting points of people. It's beautiful. I mean, there's a, a required amount of, of budget that has to be spent on beautification, on introducing the students to culture and art and so on. Okay? Everybody goes through this. Okay? Well, maybe you can figure out a way to do this privately without government. I doubt it. I don't think you could do it for the poorest. Okay? But I would say I would like to see a system like that uh, in, in America, something like it. Okay? I think that's something that government could at least help get started, even if we thought of a better way to do it than have government uh, fund it, but I Steve? think that'll be unavoidable yeah. as well. I, just two quick, quick comments there. I think one, um, it's, it's doubtful to me that it actually is, it does respect the dignity more of poor people to turn them dependent on government. Uh, but the other question is whether charitable, what about the dignity of the giver, right? At least within Charitable, you know, charitable and other kinds of organizations, givers are giving because they think it's important, they think it's valuable, they want to help. I think that that respects their dignity more than taking money from them when... when, the, when well, but I think the over. dignity that's challenged here is of the poor. I don't right. think the, well, I don't think the rich it's, it's, yeah. charity givers have a problem about dignity that I have to worry about. I'm worried about uh, and, and I am the, too, the but it's, it's not, again, it's not clear to me, especially when, at least the studies that I know, indicate that folks who, who, who benefited, and historically, who benefited from chari charity and mutual aid got off of those and got on their feet more quickly. That seems to respect their dignity in a much more important way. Well, and one other point, real quick, I wanted to make okay. about the comparison to Western Europe. I think it's important to point out that a lot of those countries you know, have systems different from ours and do have larger welfare states and often more targeted in, in certain sorts of ways. But those countries also have higher unemployment rates and lower labor force participation rates. And if we want to talk about sort of dignity of people and we want to talk about the opportunity to carve out one's life and to earn a living for oneself and to do the things that one loves, regardless of what one earns at it, I think it's important to make sure that we maximize employment opportunities for people. I think that's a shortcoming of many of those societies that have chosen to trade off that kind of supposed security against more dynamic, growing economies. Uh, okay, let me... Okay, uh, so let's uh, move to the final segment then, which is the, the second round of, of, uh, of questions. Uh, so I think uh, last time we started, so we'll go back this way. Steve, do you have a question yeah. that you want to ask I, for, I, for Jeff? I'm sort of, I'm curious, Jeff. So how, you know, what would, in, in your sort of idealized world, right, what, what would that role of the market be? And sort of where, how, how do you see the, those limits of inequality? Where, what, what would you want to do about it? And how, how would you know that inequality was, was too great? I mean, where, where do the sort of, ben I mean, you've talked about how, you know, you have this sort of <laughs> kind of libertarianism and that, that, that's not inequality per se. So I'm just curious, what's the problems, where are the problems you see in markets and where are those limits? Uh, well, first of all, let me say I am, uh, believer in capitalism. I'm a believer in the free market. I uh, have recently written a book which is, uh, I'm sure you'll love this, a Marxian defense of capitalism. Um, <laughs> you think that's logically impossible, right? Mm. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, I believe in it. I believe that the, the main contribution that comes from the market, and this is a moral thing, is uh, uh, dramatically increasing the standard, the material standard of living of people. I think this has been going on now for a long time. I think it's going on globally now because of the spread of capitalist reforms. Uh, it's going on constantly in America, even in the face of inequality. I agree that the poor are better off now materially uh, than they were 20 years ago, than 40 years ago. Here's one statistic which I just really love. In 2009, 82% of Americans below the poverty line had air conditioning. Think about that, you know? And imagine what they had 20 years ago or 40 years ago, okay? You know, so that's a way in which capitalism is working, but I mean, that's very general, okay? That is across the board. 
it doesn't quite get to individuals like the kid in that movie. Okay? There, I think that the question are questions about discrimination, about poor education, um, and related ideas like that, which I don't think you can just exclude the role of government there somehow because uh, dogmatically. Maybe government, uh, maybe government can be replaced. Maybe not. I think that we've had a welfare system which treats people as the objects of uh, charity, has treated them in a very condescending way, and that contributes to dependence. I'm all for changing that. Okay? But, you know, I, I'm not worried about the dignity of, of charitable givers. I'm worried about the recipients who think, you know, only because of the kindness of these more successful people do I get it. It's not because I, I deserve it. You know that the society owes me some kind of uh, fair share. Definitely, and, I want to give I want to give Steve a chance yeah, to respond sure. real quick, I'll and then wrap it up. Of course, real quick. I think the only comment I'd make there is the assertion that government isn't the solution to these problems, or, or perhaps isn't necessary. For me, is not a dogmatic assertion. It's an empirical question. Has government worked at these things? Can it work at these things? That's the question. And I think it's got a more mixed answer. It's worked some and worked and failed some. So let's make it work more. Thank you.